Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lepakshi Kurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Tuesday, the 12th of July. Heavy rain wrecks havoc leads to flood-like situation in Western India. Sri Lankans revel in rare tour of President's House, new president to be elected on July 20th. An anger mounts as Pakistan government continues to ignore flood hit Gilgit Baltistan. And now for all the details. Several Indian states are experiencing heavy monsoon rains leading to floods, severe water logging that has disrupted the movement of residents and deprived them of food and electricity. At least seven people died in the last 24 hours in western Gujarat while over 9,000 people were relocated and 468 rescued. Heavy rainfall since Sunday has resulted in severe water logging and flood-like situation in several parts of western Indian state of Gujarat. At least seven people lost their lives over the last 24 hours, while over 9,000 people were relocated and 468 were rescued. The weather department has issued a warning of heavy to very heavy rainfall with isolated extremely heavy rains in several districts including Navsari, Walsa, Tapi and Surat during the next five days. Residents of flood-hit Navsari district said they have been facing a shortage of essentials, which has added to their woes as their houses remain flooded with water. District collector Navsari Amit Prakash Yadav said the Purna River was overflowing above the danger level and the situation was to prevail for some more time. The largest city of Gujarat, Ahmedabad, experienced water logging in some areas after heavy rainfall, with sewer water and garbage overflowing into the streets causing inconvenience to the people and posing a risk to their health. Gujarat Chief Minister Bupendra Patel on Tuesday conducted an aerial survey of the flood-affected areas in the state. Earlier, Prime Minister Narendra Modi in a telephonic conversation with Patel assured to provide all necessary help from the centre to tackle the situation. Meanwhile, heavy rains in India's financial capital, Mumbai, caused water logging, slowed down traffic and caused high tides amid an orange alert, which means very heavy rains from 6 cm to 20 cm of rain. Extreme weather in South Asia has become more frequent in recent years, and environmentalists warn that climate change could lead to even more serious disasters. And India is set to become the world's most populous country during 2023, overtaking China with its 1.4 billion people, according to UN figures. According to World Population Prospects 2022, the global population is estimated to reach 8 billion on November 15, 2022. The global population is growing at its slowest rate since 1950, having fallen under 1% in 2020. India is likely to surpass its neighbour China as the world's most populous country in the coming year, as per a report by the United Nations on Monday. India, which will surpass China as the world's most populous nation by 2023, is projected to have a population of 1.668 billion in 2050, way ahead of China's 1.317 billion people by the middle of the century. According to a report by the World's Population Prospects 2022 by United Nations Department of Economic and Social Affairs, Population Division, the global population is estimated to reach 8 billion on November 15, 2022. The recent projections by the UN suggest that the world's population could grow to around 8.5 billion in 2030 and 9.7 billion in 2050. It is projected to reach a peak of around 10.4 billion people during the 2080s and to remain at that level until 2100. 
More than half the growth we will see in the next 30 years will happen in just eight countries. The Democratic Republic of the Congo, Egypt, Ethiopia, India, Nigeria, Pakistan and the Philippines and Tanzania. At the same time, some of the world's most developed economies are already seeing population decline as fertility rates fall below 2.1 children per woman, which is known as the replacement rate. In 61 countries, the report says populations will decline by at least 1% by 2050. Global life expectancy at birth reached 72.8 years in 2019, an improvement of almost 9 years since 1990. Further reductions in mortality are projected to result in an average global longevity of around 77.2 years in 2050. Yet, in 2021, life expectancy for the least developed countries lagged seven years behind the global average. And in news from Sri Lanka, Sri Lankans continue to flock the President's house and the Secretariat on Tuesday in large numbers. Days after protesters stormed into the colonial era buildings, prompting the President and the Prime Minister to quit over the worst economic crisis in decades. Both the leaders are set to officially announce their resignation on Wednesday. The Parliament will elect a new President on July 20th. Sri Lankans continued to queue outside the president's house in capital Colombo on Tuesday to take a tour of the colonial era building days after thousands of protesters stormed the official residences of the president and the prime minister over their inability to overcome a devastating economic crisis. Both President Rajapaksa and Prime Minister Ranil Vikrame Singhe have confirmed they will quit on Wednesday to make way for a unity government. The president has not been seen in public since Friday and his whereabouts are unclear. The parliament will reconvene on July 15 and a new president will be elected on July 20, the parliamentary speaker said on Monday. Sri Lanka's financial crisis is deepening and the protesters have said they won't leave until both the leaders finally quit. So we entered the premises and now we just came out and uh, we noticed a lot of stuff that has been going on inside. I mean, a lot of my people have been suffering for so many days and all along our so-called president, Mr. Gotabe Rajapaksha, had been living a luxurious life. So he had all the facilities necessary for a common man in our country while the rest of us were suffering. Meanwhile, security was tightened at the Prime Minister's residence on Tuesday after the building was set on fire and vandalized by protesters. Reports suggested the main opposition party was set to nominate its leader, Sajid Premadasa, for the president's post later in the day. The country has been hit by soaring inflation, currency depreciation, rolling power cuts and terrible fuel shortages, which has sparked public outrage. The crisis hit nation barely has any dollars left to import fuel, which has been rationed to essential journeys for buses and trains. In news from Pakistan, opposition PTI party chairman Imran Khan has warned Pakistan is heading towards a similar situation to that of Sri Lanka due to the dynastic rule of the Sharif and Zardari family. Addressing a poll rally, the former premier urged supporters to vote out the ruling PMLN government in the upcoming Punjab by polls. Ousted Prime Minister and opposition PTI party chairman Imran Khan on Monday said, that Pakistan is heading towards a similar situation to that of Sri Lanka due to the dynastic rule of two families, that of PMLN Supremo Nawaz Sharif and his coalition ally, PPP co-chairman Asif Ali Zardari. Addressing a rally in Lodhran ahead of July 17th Punjab Bipol, Khan said that the two families have become billionaires while Pakistan is drowned in debts and economic crisis. He said the incumbent rulers during his tenure would raise a hue and cry over inflation, but after coming into power, they are just focused on closing down their corruption cases. He urged his supporters to foil all attempts of rigging and defeat the ruling PMLN and the turncoats who have left PTI to join the PMLN. Mulkum Cruz Cardia, Khodarbo Karbapati Banchuke, 
Meanwhile, PMLN Vice President Maryam Nawaz addressing a similar poll rally in Punjab said, the incumbent government has taken all tough decisions needed to steer the country out of the crisis, blaming the previous PTI-led regime of taking faulty decisions. Wooing voters ahead of the Sunday's election, she said, now good days are coming, and added, PM Shehbaz Sharif will soon announce a major relief package soon. And moving on, scores of people in parts of Gilgit-Baltistan have been badly hit by flash floods triggered by heavy rainfall in recent days. Locals said the deluge has damaged several houses, cultivated land and fish farms, but there has been no relief from the government so far. Residents in Sher Kela village of Gilgit, Baltistan have expressed anger towards the Pakistani government for ignoring them amid the flood situation in the legally occupied region, which has left a trail of destruction. They said that the flooding has damaged several houses, inundated last tracks of cultivated land and destroyed fish farms in Gizar district, while at least four deaths have been reported. Locals said there is a need for rehabilitation of more than 250 families on an emergency basis, but there has been no relief so far. So I will say that the Gilgit Baltistan government has imposed an emergency in the share of the share. The people who have the best of the share 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 of the share. Intense floods have killed dozens of people and left hundreds homeless across Pakistan as well, officials have said. Last week, 64 deaths occurred in different parts of Balochistan province as eight dams burst due to flood waters. And in news from Afghanistan, Taliban's acting minister of defense, Malvi Mohammad Yaqub Mujahid, said that Afghanistan and Qatar are expected to sign an agreement for security cooperation post his recent two-day official trip to Doha. The agreement will be assessed by the officials of the Islamic Emirate to decide whether to close the deal, Mujahid added. The acting defense minister added that he requested Qatar's assistance in providing salaries, uniforms and equipment for Islamic Emirate forces. However, political analysts are of the opinion that Qatari government is willing to sign a deal with Afghan authorities based on the wants of the international community. The Taliban, whose government remains an international pariah without formal recognition, have courted regional powers, including Qatar and Turkey, to operate Kabul airport, landlocked Afghanistan's main air link with the world and others. The Afghan economy has plunged into crisis as Western governments have withdrawn funding and strictly enforced sanctions, saying the Taliban government needs to change course on human rights, especially those of women. And moving on to news from Nepal, Nepal's House of Representatives on Monday unanimously passed a bill to extend a statute of limitation in rape cases, extending deadline to file a case from one year to three years in some cases. This came after a clause-wise discussion on a report submitted by the Law, Justice and Human Rights Committee. The government had registered the bill after a woman shared an ordeal on social media in May this year that she was allegedly raped eight years ago by a beauty pageant organizer. But a case under the rape law could not be filed against the accused, as it had to be filed within a year of the crime. The new legislation stipulates that if a rape victim is a minor, she can lodge a case within three years after she turns 18. Perpetrators will also have to compensate the victims. The government had proposed in the bill that if somebody lodged a false FIR against a person, the complainant shall be imposed half of the punishment that the alleged perpetrator could face in the case. The House panel, however, removed this provision. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India.